Hi, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending where you are connecting from. My name is Pedro Mendoza. I'm a solutions architect with the AWS IoT team. And today I will be doing a very short demonstration of how to connect the ThingStack and AWS IoT Core, and also how to uh, use the data uh, in the AWS uh, platform once it is ingested uh, from the uh, from the LoRaWAN network. So I will start with a bit of context. So this is my uh, thing stack environment. In this case, I'm using a sandbox account in the uh, EU uh, cluster. And I have created uh, an application, uh, right? This is my application. I have associated uh, a device uh, to this application. In this case, it's a uh, bro one uh, temperature and humidity sensor, right? And uh, in addition to that, I have also configured an integration with uh, AWS IoT Core. You can uh, easily access that by uh, navigating to the integration section of the of the ThingStack console, and there you will have access uh, to both uh, details on the architecture and also the deployment guide. The actual deployment is quite quite easy. Uh, in addition to some prerequisites uh, around the need to create an API key on the ThingStack uh, for granting access to the uh, integration to certain operations on the on the ThingStack API, uh, you uh, all you have to do is select the region where you want uh, the uh, integration to be deployed. Uh, we are using uh, CloudFormation to provision all the artifacts that are actually backing uh, the integration. Uh, you select the region. You also select the flavor of the ThingStack that you are using, right? Uh, please note that uh, now uh, Community Edition is also supported, right? And then uh, once you select it, uh, all you need to do is basically, uh, let's say I will select uh, Oregon, right? And just click on the on the bottom and it will directly drive you to the uh, CloudFormation console in the specific region. And uh, the CloudFormation uh, wizard will be pre-configured with the right template, uh, depending on the specific flavor that uh, you're using for the thing stack. Uh, due to time constraint, I will not really go deep into each of the input parameters, uh, but uh, you know there are really uh, uh, plenty of configurations uh, settings that you can use uh, around, for example, how do you want to uh, uh, name the, the LoRa devices uh, on the AWS IoT Core registry, right? You also need to provide uh, the, uh, uh, the cluster uh, endpoint that you're using, right? And also the application ID that will be uh, linked on the ThingStack side, and also the application API key that you that you created before, right? Uh, this is again a very very quick uh, set of set of process. I have already uh, done that uh, for this uh, demonstration, and as a result, uh, once my device starts sending data, uh, it will uh, create uh, a new thing in the Sync registry in IoT Core. As you can see, uh, this is the uh, device uh, EUI. Uh, for my uh, temperature sensor. And uh, you can see that uh, it contains uh, information such as, for example, uh, you know, the shadow document is uh, automatically updated uh, as part of the, uh, you know, any uh, uplink message that the device sends, right? And uh, it will also allow me to uh, start uh, ingesting the data and start manipulating that data in the AWS side, right? So right now, uh, there will be uh, data being sent on a, a specific topic. Uh, if I quickly show you the architecture, right? Let me make it a bit larger, right? You can see that uh, the devices will be uh, ingesting data into uh, an, a specific, uh, a specific uh, topic name, right? And it will be automatically handled and republished in uh, a different topic. Uh, I mean, basically, it, it will be a decrypted payload in case you're using end to end encryption. And the data uh, decrypted will be published into uh, this topic, right? Lora one slash the device uh, name slash uplink. So, what uh, I will be doing next is uh, leverage the AWS IoT Core rule changing component. I will be creating a new rule, right? Let, let me call it TTI the code, right? And uh, let me just quickly copy and paste. So I think actually it is uh, TTI decoder, the rule name. And uh, what this uh, rule will be doing is basically will be invoking uh, a Lambda function that uh, will take care of decoding uh, the binary payload coming from the uh, LoRa device 
uh, into something that can be used uh, downstream, right? Uh, you can see I'm basically invoking here a Lambda function that, as I mentioned, will uh, basically, uh, if I quickly show you the code for the Lambda function, will be uh, doing a very basic decoding um, transformation just to uh, surface, in this case, uh, two attributes, the temperature of, of, the, of the device uh, and also the battery level, right? Uh, this is a very convenient way to uh, perform this transformation in line. Uh, and uh, once I uh, have the code, that payload, I will basically add an action. Uh, in this case, uh, it will be simply republishing, in this case, the decoded message into an AWS, another uh, AWS uh, IoT core uh, topic. So uh, the topic I will be sending the data to, let's call it TTI decoded, right? Also need to select the quality of service. And here I will quickly uh, create a new a new role. So call it uh, IoT Core Republish TTI. So it will create a new role. Oh, looks like already exists. So let me select a different name. IoT Core Republish TTI Demo. Okay. It will, uh, it will attach the required policy, and that's basically uh, all I need to do. So I can now add the action, right? And uh, as soon as I create the rule, now everything that uh, gets uh, published into the uh, input topic will be republished into the new topic. As you can see, uh, we are uh, basically reacting to Lora one slash something slash uplink, right? We are including a filtering condition, and then we are basically invoking that Lambda function. And the, the output of this uh, uh, Lambda execution is going to be republished into a different topic. So uh, if I test it, right? Uh, let me quickly, I will use the uh, MQTT test client available in the uh, IoT core console. And I will be basically subscribing to the decoded topic name, right? So now, as soon as uh, my devices start uh, sending data, I should be able to see the data being uh, decoded, right? And uh, yeah, we can see there is some data uh, being uh, pushed from the device. So if, for example, I keep increasing the the temperature, right? It should basically, we should be able to see the new the new data flowing. Okay, so how can I really turn that data into some, uh, you know, analytics or visualization uh, solution? So I will uh, next create a second rule. In this case, uh, we'll name the rule. TTI underscore TS. TS stands for time stream, which is a managed service uh, coming from AWS for storing uh, time series data. And in this uh, in this case, my my SQL statement for this rule will basically be just selecting a couple of attributes. In this case, uh, the actual numeric uh, values in the in the decoded payload. And uh, I will be sending those to uh, a different destination. You can see the rules engine supports uh, really a large number of, of actions. Uh, and I will be here sending the data to time stream. I will uh, create a new time stream uh, database just for uh, illustrating how easily it is to provision this type of, of resources. Right? I will just provide a name and uh, accept default settings. Okay. And uh, I will also create here a new, um, a new table. So I just selecting the just created um, database. Uh, here I'm providing how long I want the data to be stored in memory. So I will uh, go for something very small. And also, you need to uh, indicate for how long you want the data to be stored in magnetic storage, right? So again, very simple to, to set up and configure. 
now I have my new uh, my new table. It's called uh, sensors within the TTI database, and I should be now in a position to actually uh, create uh, my new uh, my new action. They just created rule, and uh, I will be selecting both the database and table names that I created before. And here, uh, the only thing I need to uh, indicate is uh, that I want a dimension. I will call it device ID, and uh, the data for the device ID, ID is coming from the uh, a specific attribute in the page, right? So if, if you recall, if I go back to the, uh, to the monitor, you can see that we have here within the output uh, element, we have an element or attribute called device, and that's where the actual device name is uh, contained, as it comes from the, um, the thing stack uh, LMS. So uh, going back to the rules engine, that's all I need to do. By default, I will be using, uh, I will be adding uh, a timestamp uh, using the the time the timestamp uh, at the at the time the the rule is is running, right? Which in this case approximating to the the actual timestamp of the message, and then by default, uh, this action will uh, identify all the numeric attributes uh, in the in the SQL statement. And we'll uh, use this as measures in the in the time stream table. Again, we'll create a new role. So let me call it uh, IoT core time stream uh, TTI demo. Okay. Uh, this is just basically controlling the permissions between IoT core and in this case time stream. And that's basically all I need to do. So let me quickly add this action. Okay. And then I should be good to create the rule. And now, uh, as soon as we start uh, sending data again, uh, we should be able to confirm that actually data is flowing into my time stream uh, table by simply querying the table, right? So right now, this table should be, uh, should be empty. You can see basically no data, right? Uh, if I, mm, you know, start sending uh, New data, right? So, for example, let, let me further increase the temperature of of my device, right? We should see the new message here, right? So now it's uh, 24, and if I uh, query my time string table, if everything went fine, you can see now that we have basically two uh, two measures: one for the temperature, one for the battery, with the same timestamp, both associated to the device. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's uh, you know increase the temperature even further. Okay, now we should have yet another uh, record in the in the time stream. Table. Okay, so now we have seen recapping to this point, we have seen uh, you know the integration in place. So every time uh, the device send a new data through the sync stack, uh, that message will be uplinked to the uh, AWS IoT core. And by using this combination of, of uh, IoT uh, code rules, we are able to first decode the message from the binary representation to, into a JSON representation that can be used on a stream. And also, we can uh, execute uh, certain actions. In this case, we are storing the data in a, in a time stream uh, database. Uh, finally, uh, we can, uh, let's say, leverage the, uh, the Grafana uh, deployment. So I'm using here a, a local locally deployed Grafana environment. Uh, and uh, you can also use, for example, the managed Grafana service uh, from, from AWS. Uh, and what I will be doing here is basically I will be creating a new data source. Uh, yeah, so mm, here, basically, uh, let's call it uh, TTI, right? So uh, here you can select the source. We have a Grafana plugin for time stream. And this is where you uh, need to provide how the Grafana uh, server will be, uh, you know, uh, authenticating against uh, AWS. Uh, again, I'm using US uh, West 2, so I need to select the region. Uh, and now we should be able to see the TTI database. You can also select the sensors table, and uh, we should be good. Now I can quickly go and create a new dashboard. So I will be uh, adding a new, new panel. Here, make sure that you select 
uh, the uh, the right uh, the right database. Okay, I think it's called downstream. And uh, and now I will simply enter the query. I have already saved it here. Just to save some time. And uh, if I run it now, as you can see, let me reduce it to the last 15 minutes, so it's a bit easier to read, right? You can see that we have a couple of points. We can send uh, yet another value. So, for example, now uh, we will uh, temperature should be uh, back down, and uh, this ingestion is happening very, very quickly. As you can see, it's uh, it's almost uh, near real time, and uh, yeah, you can now save your dashboard and so on. So. Uh, that's basically what I want to quickly show you today. Again, it's a uh, very, very short demo, but I hope it really illustrates uh, first how you can uh, bridge uh, both uh, awards, the LoRa one award with uh, AWS IoT Core, and also how you can leverage the AWS uh, ecosystem to really turn that data into business value. Thanks a lot.